All right, the final segment for angular kinetics, we're going to deal with um, angular impulse. So we've discussed angular momentum and how we can manipulate, or that angular momentum is conserved, and due to moment of inertia, we can manipulate the velocity about which we rotate, which is very fun and cool, except we need to create an angular impulse. And so angular impulse is torque times time. Instead of force times time, it is torque times time. Okay, a torque is a force times a moment arm. Oh, it's hard to draw with my mouse. So we have a force times a moment arm, and that creates an angular impulse, which results in angular momentum. Sometimes in sport or dance, we are limited by um, the distance that we can create or the moment arm that we can create between between these forces, and that's going to minimize our angular impulse. Yet these athletes can still do some amazing, amazing things. So some people create a rotational or an angular impulse on one foot, right? So that definitely decreases the moment arm between the forces. And in ballet, you have this maybe second position that also decreases the moment arm. Yet they can still do many pirouettes and do amazing things. So let's compare these. In the linear world, Impulse is force times time. It results in momentum, mass times velocity, or the quantity of motion. You cannot alter the mass. In the angular world, impulse is torque times time, resulting in angular momentum, which is moment of inertia, times angular velocity. You can alter the moment of inertia because it is mass times the radius squared, and that allows us um, to do some pretty impressive things in mo motion. So to finish up, um, let's talk about Newton's third law in the rotation world. It's action-reaction. So here's Philippe Petit um, crossing between the two world, tra world Trade Centers. And so he is rotating or balancing about his anterior-posterior axis. So if this balance bar starts to rotate in one direction or create a torque in one direction, he will try to oppose that torque with an equal and opposite torque. So he does not fall, and he didn't fall. So it's called count torque counter torque. Instead of force action reaction, you know, you apply a, a force to the ground and the ground applies a force to you. This is, there's a torque applied to a body part or segment, and there's an equal and opposite torque on another body or segment. So what are some applications? In the long jump, you can see sometimes people almost curl into a C, so their upper body is torquing, um, say flexing, and their lower bar body is equal and opposite to that. Basketball jump shot, the same thing. You see some people kind of like their upper body you know, throws the ball and their lower body comes up. The Draymond Green syndrome, sometimes called um, unnatural body movements, but I'm going to disagree on that. And then sometimes um, techniques. So the Fosbury flop for the high jump, you have a rotation of the upper body and a rotation of the, of the lower body. All right, and that's it. Mm -hmm.